built the same app with Capacitor, React Native and Flutter. And here's an honest review of the three best cross-platform frameworks. Hey everyone, what's up? My name is Simon and I'm the referee in today's showdown between Capacitor, React Native and Flutter. I must admit, I'm not completely bias-free because I've been using Ionic for the last seven or eight years, which is using Cordova and Capacitor. But actually, I think this brings me or makes me more critical of Ionic compared to React Native and Flutter. So the question for what is exactly the best cross-platform frameworks, how do I best build my iOS and Android apps, comes up pretty much every week. And I've tried to build the same application with three frameworks, so I can give you my honest feedback of how the developer experience feels and how the results of these apps look like. For this, we will first of all uh, go through the three different technologies, and I will quickly explain the differences between them, and then we will get into the actual comparison between them, the results, and what I uh, would recommend in different cases, because they are Actually, they are all great, but they serve kind of different purposes. And I think I came up with some legit recommendations in which cases you should prefer one over the other. So definitely stick around until the end for that resume. Just like the three videos that I've made on these topics, uh, this video is as well sponsored by Rapid API. So I've built the Capacitor, the React Native and the Flutter app as a meme creator and I used APIs from Rapid API. You can do the same, simply go to to Rapid API, create an account for free and you can access the whole library of APIs. Just pick the APIs that you want and then you can easily combine multiple APIs, different APIs in just one project. You don't have to use all the uh, crazy technologies out there like I did. You can just do this in one project but still get the benefit of Rapid API. So go check it out, Rapid API, create your free account and also support this channel of course. So now let's start our comparison and first of all look at Capacitor. Capacitor is a cross-platform native runtime for web apps and was developed by the company behind Ionic. So Ionic is pretty much a mobile UI toolkit to build mobile applications for iOS and Android. They initially used Angular and Cordova, but they discovered that Cordova had some issues. So they actually built their own tool called Capacitor. Whoa, whoa. Here I come. Which basically helps to wrap a web view into a native application. If you have a native application for iOS and Android, they have a native project, and in that native project is usually code like Kotlin on Android or in Java or Swift or Objective C on iOS. And with Capacitor, you just write a web application, could pretty much be whatever you want, and then Capacitor helps to just display one web view in that native project and generate that native project and help you with a few of those things. If you've never seen this, this is not like just a website in a native application, it's really, it is pretty much native. You can install that application, it's inside the app store, you can download it and there's no address bar at the top, of course. And what sounds terrible to some is actually a pretty legit way and so many companies, enterprise companies are using Capacitor. You actually, I'm pretty sure most of you will have at least one Cordova or Capacitor application on their device and you usually can't see it if the developers make a good job. For the code, you use JavaScript or TypeScript and you can uh, access native APIs through plugins, through Capacitor plugins. There are a few community plugins. You can use Cordova plugin. Basically, it's just like, you have a piece of native code and you have your JavaScript code and Capacitor helps you pretty much to access from JavaScript that piece of native code. On top of that, you're kind of free to select whatever UI library you want. So you can add Capacitor to any kind of React project, a Swell project, a Vue project, Angular, whatever it might be. Uh, and you can just select your own UI library, just like I did in the meme creator for uh, with React and Capacitor. Besides that, Capacitor really has just an intentionally small API and there's not a lot to Capacitor, but the end result is still powerful. React Native, on the other hand, is developed by Facebook. So that also means for writing React Native applications, you need to understand the React framework. Besides for Capacitor, we could use all the languages and just add Capacitor. For React Native, we're really bound to React. The initial slogan of React Native was learn once, write everywhere, because you just once need to learn how to use React, and then you can use it for React web applications and for React Native. However, actually writing React web applications and React Native is somewhat different, and I've seen this in my 
a video because React Native doesn't have the classic DOM element from the web. So there are differences, a lot of libraries don't work like that, but I don't want to get too much <laughs> into complaining about React, it's just this is a difference between React Web and React Native projects. Under the hood, React is still just JavaScript and TypeScript, so if you know this and get into React, it's not really hard to understand React Native. Come on, man. For Capacitor, it just wraps our web application into a web view. React Native actually renders our controls to some native uh, primitive UI. Like if you have a React Native text element, this actually renders to the according native text element on iOS and Android. So this is a different already uh, to what we see with Capacitor. On top of that, React Native just provides some really, really basic stuff like a text, an image view, and a list, and not really anything regarding the UI out of the box. So everything you want comes from the UI libraries that you add on top. This could be Tailwind, could be Mentine, could be Chakra, could be pretty much whatever you want because it's React and everyone can do what they want. Additionally, nowadays React also comes with a recommendation to use Expo, uh, which I've also used in my tutorial with React Native with the meme creator. So Expo helps us to bring our React Native application to a real iOS and Android device. Uh, we can easily get a preview because it's kind of crazy connected through some stuff inside Expo. However, this has also some downsides. We're going to talk about this in the end because Expo is still limited to things. So there, there are things you just can't do with Expo right now. It's a nice thing to get started for beginners, but for advanced people, mm, maybe there's something else. And with Capacitor, we just wrap our web application that anyway kind of exists for the web as a website already for native. React Native, on the other hand, is targeted towards creating an iOS and Android app, but you can get web as an output as well. And they're making progress in that direction. However, React Native compiling for the web is not really there yet. They're making progress year over year, but so far what I've seen, it didn't convince me in the end. Which brings me to Flutter, which actually can also compile for the web, but Flutter for the web, wow, this is, <laughs> you don't want to use this. EMOTIONAL DAMAGE! Flutter compiles for the web as a big canvas element. So you don't have a dumb element with, with the cool stuff inside. No, no, no. Flutter just renders a canvas element. It actually does this pretty good. So your application on the web can be con performant. Like if you have a marketing page or a UI fancy stuff in there, it's just a canvas element. It can actually work. So I don't say the output from Flutter for the web is inherently bad. It's just that the output output in general is bad, like the format of a canvas, because screen reader, accessibility, eh, we don't care about this. But anyway, the output from Flutter for mobile is completely different. So Flutter, my third uh, framework that I've compared, is uh, developed by Google. It's a bit different because previously we just had JavaScript and TypeScript. For Flutter, however, you have to learn the Dart language. Now this is actually not something you really need to fear because if you've used Python or TypeScript or Java or any of these object-oriented programming languages, getting into Dart isn't really hard. So it just took me like a day to get used to the flow and that a promise is not a promise but now a future and some stuff like that. But on the other hand, like it's just code. It's not like we're writing Haskell or anything else like Dart is a legit language and it's definitely cool to learn something new if you haven't used it before. In contrast to React Native, Flutter comes with a ton of components right out of the box so you don't need to think about mm, which UI library am I gonna use? No, just use the Flutter component because they look good and you can customize pretty much every piece, may it be padding or may it be anything else. However, creating your UI is not HTML but it's writing code, it's more declarative it's a bit comparable probably to Swift UI and how you create views with Swift UI nowadays. Pretty much everything about Flutter is custom, so they also have their own uh, manager called pub. So you install pub, install some kind of package compared to npm, what we usually use in web projects. They have their own rendering engine called Skya, uh, which is interesting because this sits above the native layer. Um, some people complain about this and say, hey, why are you not rendering to native controls? Rendering to native controls is a lot better. However, by doing this, Flutter can easily adapt with this layer and then bring the same experience to the web in the end as well. Because if they're improving the style, a rendering layer here, 
um, they can do this uh, pretty much everywhere. On top of that, Flutter advertises that the output from Flutter is not only for iOS and Android, but also for embedded devices, uh, uh, desktop apps and other use cases. So it could be interesting in the future if we want to target different uh, things like an Android TV or some kind of smart whatever watch or uh, glasses or anything, uh, we might have to use Dart to do this or even Flutter. Now, that's enough for the technologies. I hope you get a pretty decent picture of Capacitor, React Native and Flutter. So let's dive into a little showdown of the frameworks. Now we could go through all the categories and details like in an advertisement about like the performance and all the specifications, the languages and whatnot. But I think this is already best discussed in a great video on the Fireship channel as well. Instead, we're gonna talk about the developer experiences and everything that I encountered during my adventure with these three meme creators uh, built with the uh, Capacitor React Native and Flutter because this is really first-hand things uh, that you don't read inside the marketing copy on those pages. It's just what you experience in the day-to-day -day life if you use these tools. Let's once again start with Capacitor. Capacitor is probably the tool I know best simply because I come from a Cordova background. I've used Cordova like eight years ago and I switched over to Capacitor once it reached a stable version probably like three-ish years ago. Instead of combining Capacitor with Ionic, which I would actually recommend if you want to create a mobile application, I combined it just with a plain React web application because the promise of Capacitor is drop it into any web project. So a lot of people, the community, the world, many people have a React web application and putting Capacitor into that project, which probably already has some kind of UI library is like the best thing to compare on a decent scale. But in my scenario, I had to develop the React application as well, which initially brought up the question for a decent UI library. Because if I want to use Capacitor, I usually have a web application or want to have a web application and a native iOS and Android application. And there's not really any great UI library. And I spend a ton of time to figure out which UI library might actually be the best for this case. In the end, I settled on Material UI, but I could also have chosen Mintine or Chakra or even Tailwind, like whatever. The next problem, if you want to really target everything like this from one code base, is how do you combine different navigation patterns? For example, in native applications, what you usually have is either a tab bar or a draw navigation with this burger menu. You sometimes see this kind of burger navigation on a web page, but most of the time, or probably not most of the time, but very often you just have a navigation bar at the top. How do you translate this without getting too ugly and media queries from having a top navigation bar on the web to having something completely different on a mobile device. This is just a very challenging problem in terms of JavaScript, CSS and HTML to figure out and it usually makes your code kind of ugly. Besides all the UI aspects, building a native project is pretty easy with Capacitor. Usually you just build it once or edit once, then you have the native iOS and Android project in your folder and you can do whatever you want with that native project because Capacitor only syncs your web build project into that native folder so then it just like displays from the server inside the app. And Capacitor is not magically changing your project. And if you understand a bit about Android Studio and Xcode, and really I just mean like if you understand probably 3% of that tool where you can put in your signing and run it on your device or an emulator. Well, then you know everything that you need and you can easily build your application on a device or a simulator or wherever you want with Capacitor. And once you got that, you can also have live reload on all the places. This is usually the thing I like the most uh, for web projects. I can just bring up my <laughs> Capacitor live reload, I have the web preview on the screen. Uh, I have a live reload here, which accesses the remote URL on my computer and I can have it on whatever kind of other. I could also have it on the Android device and then I could like this farm out of devices where I can test simultaneously. Overall, this just makes me feel like I'm in total control of the project. However, we must admit that what we see inside a native capacitor application is web code. So if your web code is slow, if your UI looks boring, or if you don't have animations, if you don't have legit transitions, your application can very quickly feel like a website. And this is something you totally don't want your users to have because users these days expect a native quality of application. If you're building like an internal tool, that might be something else. I'm getting to the recommendations in the end. However, for this basic stuff, um, 
you really want to make sure that you have a decent native UI. Yes, you can have 60 uh, FPS, no problem with capacitor and HTML. You can even build games if you add something like Phaser.js, uh, which is used to build games, no problem at all. All of these tools require some fine tuning and Ionic does a pretty good job in giving you like alerts, popovers, um, page transitions with push and pop. And you usually don't get this if you're just using something like Material UI, Mentine or anything else. Once again, this brings us to the question, what is the best UI to build a really seamless experience for web and mobile? Ionic comes pretty close, but Ionic uh, has a lot of learning and you need to do a lot of setup. So I understand that a lot of people don't want to use it because it's very opinionated. However, this is a problem of Capacita apps. Let's talk about React Native. I am probably not the biggest fan of React Native. 16. You're not that guy, pal, trust me. You're not that guy. Not because I've used Angular for so long. I actually started learning React earlier this year just out of curiosity and I enjoyed some parts of React. However, I'm also a Mac user and I kinda like to compare. Angular is pretty much like using Mac OS. You got everything, everything works. You probably have a bit too much of this and that, but overall, you got a nice structure. Whereas React is using like Unix. You need to install everything and make the cable work and then add this and that and questions everywhere. And some people like this. I'm probably not of that type. So I might be a bit overcritical of React Native. However, it starts right in the beginning. Which template do you actually use for a React Native app? Like there's no great CLI. Yes, we got create React app and there's a TypeScript template, but then I probably also want to use a different UI library and they also have their template and then do I want to use Expo uh, do I not want to use Expo and if I'm new to React Native there are so many questions right at the beginning to set this up this is really really horrible so if you then decide let's start slow let's let's start this easy let's just set up my react application with TypeScript and everything's fine and I'm getting into this then I'm like where are my UI components <laughs> Should I build a, an application with a with a text view, an image view, and a list view, and that's all? Like, and they don't even look good. So, if you want to have any kind of decent UI, you must use uh, like any framework. Probably also something. I think I used in my example native base. There's also React Native Paper. Like I said this in the beginning, the packages for React Web and for React Native, even the UI package are, are different. So this is a completely mess. And figuring out the best UI package to use is really challenging. However, a lot of them actually look good. Like native base, it does look good. Mentine, it does look good. But if you really want to go full mobile or web cross-platform, it's we brings us back to the question, what is the best UI framework that offers a seamless experience across web and mobile? And I haven't found the best one for React Native either. Okay, at some point I settled on the UI of my React Native application. Then I had like, how do I actually navigate? And it turns out I had to install another package for navigation and making this actually work. Because on the web we have got the React router, which is kind of cool. However, on the mobile uh, React Native app, this again works different. This actually, this part was kind of really confusing because there was a draw component in like native base and within the navigation package and then you had to combine everything. Everything about <laughs> React is so much figuring stuff out and going through the 10 different solutions that other people came up with and said this is the solution and you can just pick one. Yeah, you're very free in the React ecosystem. However, the outcome is definitely great. You got live reload with React, with Expo, you can easily like scan a QR code, it installs an application on your device from Expo and you easily got the sync between the app on your computer and a native device. You don't even have to go through Xcode, I think you can do this from the command line uh, pretty much. So this was a great experience, um, which I think is especially interesting for beginners because it's really that easy to bring your React Native application onto a device. However, once I've used Expo in the project for some time uh, the question came up like is this my native project or is this the expo native project because if you want to build this if you want to build an archive for submission it, they kind of pitch you the cloud build services but I know how to build an application locally with Xcode or Android Studio it's 
not that hard. You can do this with Gradle, you can do this with an Xcode build on the command line. It's not that hard. I don't want to use an Expo Cloud build for this. I really don't need to. Also, I've seen threads that you actually can't use in-app purchases with Expo. And I know that this part is really important to some people. So there are a lot of plugins included with Expo. So they have like their own environment of plugins. However, if the plugin you want to use and I wanted to use in my meme creator, a plugin to save something that a camera roll or so, uh, for which there is a package for React Native, but that package can't be used with Expo. So you're getting into a lot of trouble if you're picking Expo. However, you can eject it at the end, uh, which was kind of okay. So then you go back to your normal app and then you feel a bit better and you get more control over the React Native app. But all this expo or not expo and then getting it out of your project and you still have some references and then you use icons from expo and uh, it's... <sighs> it was really painful. So overall, I just installed tons of additional packages to make my React Native application work. The debugging experience was pretty much the same as for the web. That was actually a big plus for React Native. So they have a nice debugging tool and you can connect it to your app, whether it be simulator, device or web. So that definitely worked great. And of course, the outcome speaks for itself. The result of a React Native application is a truly native app with uh, some native rendered controls. So I just called this uh, a, a truly native result with a little taste. In Germany, we say Geschmäckle, um, which probably means, means something's cool, but there is uh, something, something to it which you shouldn't overlook. So it is a good result, but everything <laughs> I talked about before, the packages and all that rage uh, wasn't really great. Plus like the UI, you need to figure out which is the best way to build your native UI. I didn't expect a lot from our third competitor. I've made a lot of jokes about about Flutter in the past and I need to apologize. I really need to apologize. I had a huge epiphany, I would call it like that, when I got started with Flutter. Dame, this thing is so fast and so easy to use. I've made a whole podcast episode on the All the Code podcast with Simon talking about my experience with Flutter because it was a refreshing experience after all that pain with web projects. The installation is so fast because you don't uh, pull in the universe of node modules into your Flutter project. You can easily add packages which are not outdated and not dependent on other things that are outdated or introduce critical issues to your project with a with a pub manager from Flutter. And writing Dart was actually easier than expected. The only question I had in the beginning is, do you ever, does everyone use material design with Flutter? Because you've wrapped your whole Flutter application pretty much in one UI concept. Uh, so there's not like an adaptive UI. So for iOS, you get like cool iOS components. For Android, you get Android. No, you just have have like either you have material UI or you have the Cupertino UI, which I, I don't know why they called it like this, but I think this is Apple. I think you can have like a little switch between this. So I asked this on Twitter, but I haven't found a really great way to do it. However, many people said like, uh, we actually don't want this. Like we want to have a unique experience that looks the same for Android and iOS. So I completely understand that if you just select one like material UI, you go with it and it actually, I must admit, it looked also good on iOS. In terms of building the UI, it was something new for me to have this declarative UI where everything is a widget. Even adding padding to a widget is another widget. It was kind of funny because if you don't watch out, you have this huge like tree of widgets. Um, so you should definitely nest this and create your own little widgets because otherwise you really end up in hell and debugging all those brackets. It was really painful sometimes, but I learned and I've made a lot of mistakes in the process. However, writing that UI felt a bit like I've said it felt more robotic like doing HTML and CSS is a bit like art and throwing in some CSS. And this is really like Swift UI, streamlined progress to writing a declarative UI. And it actually, I must admit, it felt good. And I'm feeling good. The only thing I felt kind of strange was the navigation concept of a draw UI. Everything that I looked up, they, they made the draw navigation not in the right way. Like, 
I don't know what's wrong. They either just repainted the menu or pushed sides like, no, if you have a draw navigation and click something, the menu fades out and you reset the root page. You're not pushing a new page when you select something from the menu. And every answer that I looked up on uh, Flutter and Dart gave the same idea about this. I don't know what's wrong with the Flutter community here. Like the draw navigation, this is a standard pattern. I don't know, tap bar was easy, but draw, what? what's wrong with you? Also, I had a HTTP call to Rapid API in the project and the tr transformation from JSON result to object and then using it on my page with a future builder and stuff like, it felt kind of strange, but at the end it felt okay to create objects from this. Like I'm used to just using interfaces and TypeScript and everything is easy peasy, but if you do it like this and really create objects, I think it's actually, you could run into less issues at the end. Also for the whole uh, developing experience, I use Visual Studio Code, which allowed me to run the Flutter application directly on my device with some tools. However, I don't know if Visual Studio Code is the best environment for Dart. There might be other uh, IDEs that uh, get the job done in a better way. So be careful if you're using Visual Studio Code, just as a warning, that probably, I don't know if it's the best, um, it definitely worked great and I love my Visual Studio code, but maybe there's something better out there. And finally, in the end, the result from Flutter is it's just a great native iOS and Android application. It works so smooth. I always used Capacitor and felt the Ionic apps are really smooth, but I feel like this is even more smooth. It just flows so nicely in your application. Like this is really the output from Flutter application is the best I've seen across all three uh, frameworks. You probably watched the whole video until now or you directly skip to this part because you're interested in when to use which of those frameworks. And let me give it to you. So I would recommend you use Capacitor when you want an easy way to wrap your existing web application into a native application. That was easy. If you want to minimize the development time for your project because you have one single code base for web and iOS, which means if you got new features, implement it once. If you got bugs, implement it once. You just need to fix it once and this will very much decrease the development time of all of your apps. You should also use Capacitor if you users definitely want to have a web application and a native iOS and Android application and maybe even an Electron desktop application at the same time. So if you want to cover all of these cases and you don't have a team to build a dedicated native uh, project for all of these, Capacitor is a great solution for you. Also, if you want to build any kind of internal company tools, which usually don't need to look good because we've all seen like company tools with 20 form fields and everything that you can build with HTML already looks better. So if you want to build company internal tools, there's no easier way to just do it with a web code and capacitor of wrapping it into your app and boom, you're done. And finally, also, if you need to exchange the bundle of your application fast, meaning you want to have a way to update your application even if it's installed on a device then you probably want to use capacitor because there is a way to add something like code push to your application which means you can skip the uh, review process of iOS and Android once your application is out there and just update the bundle the JS and HTML and CSS of your application uh, if you find any kind of critical bug. You should use React Native when you have existing knowledge in React and probably also some kind of React web code that you can reuse. And be careful with this. I don't mean the HTML and CSFs you have written like the 10,000 lines for your project. No, I mean like if you have some custom hooks, uh, functionalities like a provider, uh, stuff like that, combination with your API, some kind of logic that you can then probably even put into its own NPM package and share across your React web application and your React native application. You should maybe also use React Native if your focus is on building a mobile application. Because the output from React Native is not really a great website, but it is probably a better mobile application than the output you get if you're using Capacitor. That doesn't mean the output from Capacitor for mobile is bad, it just means that you can probably get a better, more native output using React Native controls. You should also use React Native really if your focus is mobile and you just want to have a fallback for the web because it can 
render for the web. The output is not great, but you can probably use this in some cases uh, as like a fallback for users. And just like before, you should also use React Native if you want to have the ability to use hot code replacement of your application. Just like Capacitite, you can also do this with React Native. You just need to replace the JS bundle and uh, the, the web bundle of your application, the web build, and then you can remote update all of your applications if you need to hot fix something. So this is the option you get with React Native. Finally, you should use Flutter if you want to build a really, really great mobile app application if your focus is totally on shipping a great mobile experience and this is the most important thing for your project i would recommend flutter you should also use flutter if you just want components and ui that works out of the box if you're not interested in the pain of figuring out which ui library to use which navigation library to use and which other 10 different packages to use then just use flutter everything is included and you feel right at home and you can get productive and focused on the job to be done and just write a great mobile application. I would really recommend Flutter if you want the best possible native iOS and Android application before going completely mobile, before uh, before going completely native. So before you go writing a Swift application and a Kotlin application for iOS and Android, if you stay one step back, at that point is pretty much writing a Flutter cross-platform application. And you should use Flutter if you don't need that code push because that is kind of a minus because the it, it just doesn't work with the way Flutter is built and the Flutter application are compiled. So you can't easily replace the bundle. You have to go through the app uh, review process. But I know a lot of companies that never use the code code push. Um, so you probably don't need it as well. And you should be fine learning Dart, but I wouldn't say that this is something against or for Flutter, like learning a new language, it probably takes you two days and a little course to get used to something, but this is no argument. The learning curve of a framework is really never an argument for me. Uh, because it just takes maybe it takes two weeks, but then you use it like five years and there's just no comparison between those times So there you have my recommendation really if we had a little scale which goes from a complete webish looking app to uh, a Complete native application then on this spectrum. We have capacitor application They are web applications and in some cases you can see that those are web applications somewhere here in the middle We have react native applications because react native applications they are compiled to uh, native elements in some uh, places and they are somewhat of a great native application. And on the far right side here, where it's really close to native, we got the output from Flutter because Flutter applications feel completely smooth on mobile and they just look great. So on this spectrum, uh, you can now decide what or which of those options you want to choose from. Go Capacitor if you want to go web first, go Flutter if you want to go mobile first and go react native if you want the best of both worlds but all of this is not black and white there are so many nuances to the technology se uh, selection the experiences of your development team if this is a personal choice uh, or a personal selection then you're probably interested in the job opportunities and there's so much more to figure out like this was just a general look on those three technologies how they feel for developers and how the output compares to each other I will personally continue to use capacitor because it fits my style of preparing an app for all platforms easily but I will also get more into Flutter over the next time simply because I, I was kind of shocked how easy it is it really felt like cheating to build Flutter applications compared to everything that I knew from web development anyway I really hope this uh, comparison combined with my personal experience gave you a better view on those three frameworks all of them are great you can get great results with all of them but there are slightly some differences between them and I hope I could point them out to you in the best possible way. As I said in the beginning, this video is featured by Rapid API, so please check out the links to Rapid API and create your free account if you want to integrate great APIs no matter what uh, framework you select. And I would really love to know what's your experiences with those free frameworks because there will be new people to this video, there will be people from this channel, uh, but I know a lot of you have used these frameworks. And I would really love to know, so put your experiences in the comments. Let me know what you think about Flutter, React Native or Capacitor or if you even prefer something like .NET, MAUI or is there anything else? Like I think that we, we pretty much covered it if we got all of that, right? And let me say one last thing. We can always 
win if we respect the different approaches and don't fight each other. We can all learn, all the frameworks can grow and we can have a healthy discussion about which of these frameworks serves which purpose. There's no bashing in Capacitor is bad, React Native is bad or Flutter sucks. Uh, please have a legit conversation and then we can just win from uh, having a healthy exchange and getting better in the technologies that we use because ultimately we just want to create mobile applications and we don't want to create native apps because we want to save time. So all of these are solutions to help people build apps and if you can build a great app and someone can use that app in the daily life then you have picked the right framework. So keep that in mind and subscribe to the channel for more videos coming about all of these frameworks and even more information about building great cross-platform applications. So stay subscribed and let me know what's your choice and I will catch you inside the next video. So until then, happy coding, Simon. <laughs>